Welcome to Mechanic. Today we have a 2016 Mercedes Metris 2.0 liter turbo motor that is in this vehicle. And we have a check engine light that's on, and so we are going to scan it and then see what it is. So with this vehicle, it is a, uh, it's the van, and the Metris is a van. So it comes on to the classification of the Mercedes Sprinter. If you go up here on the UCAN-2 and you select Mercedes, you um, will be able to communicate with it a little bit, but you'll have to pick up, pick your model selection manually. So then we just go to Mercedes Sprinter, hit the smart VIN. We have the key on in the run position, but the vehicle not started. The VIN number matches what is on this vehicle. And then quick scan will scan every control module, but we want to just go to control modules, hit drive, motor electronics, read the codes. And then the stored and current, those are the ones that we are looking at more importantly. So we have the P03430 stored and current. That is the position sensor of the intake camshaft sensor in bank one. Now this is a four cylinder engine, so it's only got one bank, but we have two sensors here being on the cams. You're gonna have an intake cam, and you're gonna have an um, um, exhaust cam. Or, and so we have the intake camshaft sensor is having an issue. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that, go over the process if you need to replace the sensor. And then sometimes it might be that the sensor has gone bad or that the sensor is getting a bad reading because that maybe your um, timing chain is out of alignment or the cam got out of alignment. And if that is, it's the timing chain. And so there's you know, a lot more work. So sometimes it's easy to just go ahead and replace the sensor, test it, make sure that maybe it was just an alignment. So to gain access to this sensor, we do need to remove this air box here. And so to do that, we unhook this electrical connector and be able to um, get this out of the way. And then if you undo this, um, loosen this up, that is a uh, seven millimeter to get this clamp undone. And then we just need to pop this up and separate this connection and this also over here locks into a little component over there so we can set that away and there is technically a little cover piece that's probably on your vehicle is right here and so you would want to it's this uh rubber molding heat shield so you would remove that but you can't remove that unless you remove these little brackets and these brackets are what the air intake clamps onto. You've got one on this side with two um, E12 bolts holding it in and then one on the other side with three um, 10 millimeter nuts that hold that. Now once you remove that then you can pop this up and remove it out of the way and then we can gain access to our cam sensors here. We have the intake side cam sensor on this side the exhaust side cam sensor on this side. We also have some different sensors on the front here too. And so all of these um, are sensors that reading for the cam and, and timing and so forth. So this one, if we need to remove it to replace it, we first would want to undo the electrical connection here, pulling out the white tab back, squeezing the connection, and then being able to unplug it. And then we need a T30 here, undo that. Right, with our T30, we're able to Loosen this bolt and remove it. That holds the sensor into place. You can repeat the same thing if you needed to do the other sensor for the uh, exhaust one. And now just be able to remove this sensor, pulling it back, making sure that the O-ring comes out with it, and then being able to get a new one of these to replace it. So then we have our new sensor, put some fresh oil on there so that the uh, O-ring slides in there without pinching it so that you get a good seal there. And then putting our T30 bolt back in here to snug that into place so that everything holds in there and allow the O-ring gasket to do its job on sealing everything the way it's supposed to be. There we go, and now being able to plug this connector in and then pressing the uh, white tab in to double 
lock it into place so that it doesn't come undone. Okay. And now, um, when you're done there, you can put your little cover piece back on here, put the little brackets on, put your air intake box in, and you'll be good to go. So that's why we replace that sensor. You will want to go through the process with your scanner, the OBD2 OBD2 scanner, or the UCAN-2, and be able to clear the codes. And so we just hit erase, hit yes, and then some faults are still having some issues, and so we'll have to fix those, to get them out. Uh, so we've got another one. Oh, it's because I haven't put the intake back on, that's why it's back on here. And um, that one's stored in current. Sometimes you have to do it twice. So anyway, so after you reset, you replace that sensor, and um, we still have that. I might just need to start and run the vehicle a little bit, and then um, turn it off and, and erase it. So we're going to try that, and then otherwise, um, you just continue to drive your vehicle like you normally would. And if that same code comes back on, then you might have to do some uh, deeper uh, research whether the wire is a real short in it or the sensor was bad. Um, or maybe you put a bad sensor in to begin with again, but also uh, maybe something's really off with your timing. Thanks for watching.